All right, hello, this is AJ Hagee. I'm here with Christian Ryan uh, doing an interview for News Source. How are you doing, uh, Christian? I'm doing pretty well, just uh, enjoying another great Twisted Tuesday. Yeah, we had two reggae bands today. Uh, what, what bands were those? Uh, we had the uh, Roots of Rebellion from Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, Trial by Stone from Tallahassee. They were doing a little joint uh, Florida run together, and uh, mm-hmm. I was originally contacted by a, a buddy of mine that's a, a ska and reggae promoter, you know, about Trial by Stone. I, I, I was familiar with those guys, and, you know, they were looking for a Tuesday date in April, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, helped set it up, and it went over really well. Well, good, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, it shows well. You know, I'm glad that... It's funny how those things kind of connect, you know? You meet someone, and they connect you to a whole another, mm-hmm. another, not even locally here, but locally in another state. Yeah. And you yeah. still bring them here to this nexus of creativity that is Red Lion. Yes. And Twisted Tuesday. Yes. So. But yeah, I just kind of want to get to know you more. Um, I have a few questions. Um... So first question is, when and why did you first get into music, would you say? Well, um, I started playing the saxophone um, in middle school when I was 11 years old. Um, though I don't have any musicians in my family or anything like that in my background, um, I grew up with you know, good musical tastes around me. Um, mm-hmm. My mom, you know, she loved you know, a lot of Motown music, and my dad was more of the, the classic rock side, you know, so I was brought up with different things, but um, as far as formal training, it wasn't until I started school, and some musicians might have a cool story where, like, they heard this album or this yeah. song, and it was like, oh, I want to play this instrument now, but for me, I just kind of thought the saxophone would be, sounded pretty cool, and yeah. I needed a an art elective for school, and, and bands seemed like the best option for me, and so I rolled with it, and, you know, a few years later, I really started to enjoy it, and yeah. well, here I am. <laughs> and here you are, I just yeah. you chose that, and one yeah. thing led to another. Yeah, yeah it, it manifested <laughs> itself into something I yeah. never would have thought possible as a kid. <laughs> well, now you're known as that guy with the sa- with the sax, you know, and, like, that's how you're known for it. Yeah. And the smallest choice, it was like a, you know, butterfly fight. If you chose yes. something else, you yes. would have been known, that guy with the flute or yeah, that guy yeah. at the piano. Who, who knows, yeah. You know, who so it's cool. It might have panned out, but yeah. Yeah? Well, okay, well, would you say there's any artist, that, established artist that inspired you on your journey as a sax player? Uh, locally or, or just in general? Well, both. Any any of the above? Any major ones locally? Well, I mean, there's there's the, the, the um, you know, the legends, the classics. I mean, for me, mm-hmm. when I really started taking saxophone seriously is when I first uh, discovered jazz music when I was... Um, uh, 17 in high school a friend of mine pointed me to the Dave Rubeck Quartet Dave and Rubeck. Um, okay. their saxophone player in particular Paul Desmond uh, was a huge influence on me early on and you know discovering them you know then led me to you know Miles Davis and John mm-hmm. Coltrane and some of them and I just really got into jazz and being in a classical background I really wanted to learn how to improvise and you know just started researching and studying and trying to learn what I could and you know that just led me to so many different musical palettes um, you know that's led one thing to another and here I am playing you know with reggae bands, funk bands, afrobeat, uh, putting together a hip-hop review you know it's 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 been kind of wild and I mean for me locally um, you know uh, when I started kind of getting into the original music scene uh, five years ago, uh, there was just so many great bands uh, like the legendary JCs, uh, Shaq Nasty, uh, Kaylee Baker that were just so talented that even though I grew up here, I didn't even know. Like, like wow. I, I was born and raised at Arnold Palmer Hospital just down the road, and I just didn't know the, the thriving musical talent we had. and since those days you know i've just aspired to not only want to be a part of that but to help spread awareness that you know florida's more than just a tourist attraction yeah. you know there's there's so much there's so much uh, positive positivity and uh you know creativity that's flowing through 
the greater Orlando area, I believe, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to bring it to light. So there's a whole culture evolving here. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're bringing that about. You're being a catalyst, if you will, to faci- you know, facilitating all these artists. You're booking yeah. it, you're promoting, mm-hmm. you're not just a musician, you're yeah. also... You're doing a lot more. Yeah, trying to and, do as uh, much as I can. I just, it's it's something my, you know, heart's really set on, and I just really want to spread the love, spread the news, yeah. you know. How would you say you juggle all this? I mean, oh, you, gosh, if you could sum it up. Yeah, I it? mean, it's, I mean, you know, you know, a lot of people always go, how do you do all this? How do you do all this, <laughs> you know? And I always tell them, well, it's, it's just, it's, what I put all my time and effort into, you know, there's musicians out there that have full-time or part-time jobs or go to school or mm-hmm. or, or what have you. And I literally, when I get up to when I go to bed, it's I'm either practicing, booking, rehearsing, writing, uh, reading about, like, listening. Like, it's just my whole being... Wow pretty much goes into music um wow and so you live it you know I, I live it and breathe it so i'm a, I'm a lifer <laughs> yeah i could tell so, the music is in your veins so, uh, so i just gotta <laughs> i've gotta just constantly be surrounded by it yeah what would you say your biggest challenge is as a musician if you had to you know i mean list it <laughs> you know at, at times you can almost kind of get a little burnt out with so much that's going on and it, it, it is hard to juggle everything mm-hmm. at times too and you know every musician has their plateaus whether it's on the instrument themselves or just kind of where they're going and at times it could just really feel like as much as you're pushing and trying to move forward things just aren't and it can get really frustrating um, especially if you have a personality like me that just you know, it doesn't like to just settle, you know, sometimes you just hit that wall and it's, it could be very hard to get over and you, yeah. you start to question yourself and, you know, what, what's going on and how to get over it and, you know, there's some moments that are, that are pretty tough, you know, in any creative field, I believe, you know, um, but it's really that, that test of, getting through that and pushing through that that I think separates, you know, the uh, the greats from the good. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm certainly not quite there yet, but, you know, I've, you know, from, you know, histories of musicians I've looked up to that I've read, you know, they all kind of point to those same ideas of, you know, just mm-hmm. perseverance and dedication and uh, determination of your your craft and your will and um you know just keep chugging away at it things Mm -hmm. will things will get better so you know there's just those moments sometimes where it's it can get pretty difficult but other than you know you're not alone right you do have a you have family support and multiple not just with your immediate family but your oh yes no i'm i'm i Um, feel so so fortunate so so blessed i mean my immediate family has just always been so supportive which in this kind of thing you know often is what discourages people you know their parents might say oh you need to get a real job or (laughs) you know something like that or you know um, but this is her job. Your mom yes, does yeah, do this. Yeah, so. and you know, my, my, <laughs> you know, my, whether it's my parents or my aunts and uncles or grandparents or cousins, and then of course all my friends and you know, um, non uh, direct, you know, family. You know, that's just so supportive. You know, freaking a picture goes up online and people, you know, just it's like it's like wow. You know, just yeah. people just. Oh, he's playing two saxophones. What? Uh, oh yeah, whatever. I saw that. You know, it's just like, uh, it's like, wow. You know, for me, as growing up as a kid, that, you know, in school, I I was very anti-social. I I, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't that outgoing, charismatic guy. You know, usually yeah. the guy in the back that would do all my work. You know, not say much. You know. And, Try to be a good student, and then to be here with like so many people, like running into people I don't even really know that know yeah. me, and just like it's like man, quite a 
whole different social spectrum, but it's it's yeah. it's been it's been pretty wild, but it, it's it's been pretty great. I can kind of relate, you know, as a photographer. I'm a shy guy. Yeah, I meet a lot of people as a photographer, just as used a musician. Mm -hmm. And I know people do want to come up and they ask for favors, or they mm -hmm. want to get to know you for yeah. different reasons. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like outside of our comfort zone and. And it's interesting process of meeting these new people. No, and, it is. I mean, it's and expanding really expanding ourselves in the process as well. Yeah, and I mean, through through that, and you know, through uh, myself in particular on stage, like it's just developed this, you know, yeah. whole other, you know, side of me that you know, if I met myself, you know, five six years ago or ten years ago, you know, just total total totally different. So it's it's just <laughs> yeah. cool how it's all kind of helped me grow as a person cool. in a way. All right. Well, um, okay. I wanted to talk about where we are. We're actually yes. right now, we're in the Lion's Den, an extension to Red Lion Pub. Uh, we have uh, Eric over there with Snooze Painting. He's, we have a mural to our right here mm -hmm. with different artists collaborating. And then we have mirrors, flow space. We have a, we're sitting on the stage. So I just kind of want to ask you, like, uh, there are, people are excited about this. Tell us what we can expect from this venue and... Well, uh, your the Lion's are. Den, it's truly exciting. It's, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's... I can't look at myself in so many ways. Oh, look, talk about flow artists. Yeah. We got Sarah Espy, the lovely flow artist here with Cody Core, who's spinning poi in the mirrors. Yeah, so I, <laughs> people are literally enjoying it as we they speak. Are. That's but, uh... I'm going to think I spot myself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what we hope is just to kind of really expand on everything that we've done in the mm -hmm. community. Like, yes, you know, the primary focus, you know, myself as the, the, the booker and everything, is, is a music venue. And we're, we're certainly going to be using music as that, that catalyst to, you know, further the culture. But, I mean... You know, like you said, we, we one of our walls features a, a 40 foot mural that's been a collaborative collaboration between roughly a dozen artists so far, you know, all adding their own individual uh, ideas and touches to it. And then our other wall is a, 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 is mirrored, you know, for um, for all of our flow dance and uh you know, poi communities and even at Cato. Right? Yeah, next door is yes, Cato. Yeah, at Cato, so. and you know we've so we've got you know the potential to host you know different classes and things mm -hmm. of that sort, and you know whether it's doing something like that during the day or you know having you know great music at night or having you know art showcases. You know we want to we want to incorporate a film you know we're working on, on obtaining a you know projector to have film nights nice. whether it's local film yeah. or, or student film um james freed our sound man him and i are working uh diligently to get a, 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 an online stream set up for those that you know aren't from florida that could still participate in all of our music events yeah. you know they could watch from the comfort of their home so we're really just trying to create something that's very communal uh very supportive of all the arts and you know just really bring something a little different to orlando and mm -hmm. specifically th this side of of town you know closer to full sail and ucf mm -hmm. where you know people can in this area can come here and really enjoy themselves or people from other areas you know don't have to go all the way downtown to have a good time either you know and um you know we're just really excited we've we've got we've got a high quality sound system um we've got a bunch a bunch of people on our our team that are you know really dedicated to doing this right mm -hmm. so I, I i feel very confident you know about our, our grand opening this friday and, you know, I think that's really going to set the tone for what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, soon enough, um, great things will come. What time on Friday? On uh, Friday, uh, the doors will open at 9 o'clock. Um, we're featuring three bands, uh, Leisure Chief, the Groove Orient, and Holy Miss Moly. And then we've got a couple DJs. Uh, Mr. Body Talk himself, uh, Vision Quest, will be kicking off the night at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then 
His close compatriot, uh, known as Groove, will be setting the tone in between the bands. The way we're setting it up is the DJ is going to start, uh, then the first band's going to give it a go, and then when the ba- one band's done, the DJ will immediately be going in the bar room. So the music's going to constantly be flowing, and you know we're just going to have a have a great time, have a great opener, I believe. Well, I look forward to it, man. You know, and kind of falling out. Where do you see? I mean, I noticed. Our music scene seems to be growing exponentially. Yes. Where do you see the future in places like this, the Lion's Den? Or where do you see the future of our Florida's music well, just, and art scene? Everything's just, everything's just on the up. Everything's growing. Um, I really think a lot of people are starting to catch on to it as well. There's just that, that buzz, whether it's here at Red Lion or you're in the, the Mills District or, uh, you know... Um, or at, even at the schools, like people are starting to, you know, recognize the, the the culture that's brewing here. Even like outside, you know, sources. You know, there's been some articles on Orlando in general about, you know, the different things, whether it's the arts, the, the restaurants. You know, just local grassroots culture is really starting to uh, take a forefront here and yeah. I think you know I I mean dared I say you know Orlando could you know give us five ten years we could be the next Austin you know oh. things things are you know you know we're, we're on that you know track for something like that you know I, I can't say it'll be in the immediate future 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 <laughs> but uh you know, Future. things things are. Uh, I, I just see a lot of a lot of good that's coming. A lot of pe- a lot of people are are wanting that, like craving yeah. that. You know, I mean, um, they want to you know kind of change the face of the rep or the reputation of you know what's kind of been known around here. And um, and the great thing that I've always appreciated here is you know everybody wants to work together. It's you know, there's other major cities where it could kind of be a dog-eat-dog, very competitive environment, which there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, because, you know, competitiveness does bring out, you know, uh, you know, that, that talent, that hunger to, to be great, but at the same time, you know, we're trying to, you know, really help one another out and, you know, bridge gaps between all the different s- scenes and, um... Cooperating, cooperating, you know, growing together, I think, is really what's gonna elevate the city um, into another level. All right. Do you have any advice for any other musicians that might be just starting up in their own careers, or even just starting events in their own local towns? Uh, any well, advice you uh, could offer? As as a musician. Uh, the biggest advice I could probably give, at least from my own experience uh, as a saxophonist that works with a lot of different groups, is uh, take every possible opportunity you can. Whether it, you know, whether it's performing a 15-minute function at your college, or you know, maybe going into a, a, a retirement community, and you know playing a few songs for them or you know opening up for you know uh you know even a band you might not like you know it just any any opportunity you can get especially starting out you never know what could lead to the next you know i i started playing with the evan taylor jones band in 2010 summer 2010 and Last year, I played over 250 gigs, you know, pretty much all throughout Florida with, I, you know, I collaborated with a ton of different bands in the studio, on the stage, and it's just something I never would have thought of, but, you know, every little thing is kind of built to that point, and I can't stress it enough. As a musician, take every performing opportunity, recording opportunity, compositional opportunity that you can. You never know what it could lead to. And if nothing else, you gain experience every time from it. And then um, uh, the other question you were saying um, more about... uh, Booking and promotion. Booking and promotion. Getting your own events or kind of community going. Um, 
you know, for me, um, you know, I'm really excited to do this because I feel like I know a lot of, I'm fairly well connected, um, you know, within the scenes in Central Florida, and my goal has always just been to bridge the gaps between them, and, you know, like, uh, for my, my review, I just did at Little Econ, um, you know, last weekend, you know, I was, I was so excited to bring together so many different musicians I worked with that have never even met each other before, and, you know, to see them feed off each other and, like, get so excited, you know, of people they've never even met, and all the people that were in attendance that were like, who's that guy singing, or who was that rapper, who played Trump, like, just, like, people just really, like, discovering each other, and, um, as someone putting together events and trying to build, you know, a community, you know, I, I really would suggest, you know, to go out there and, you know, discover what's out there, um, you know, go to local shows, go to local showcases, go to local food markets, go just learn what's in your scene, uh, get connected, um, and, you know, the better connected you are, the more you you'll know your different markets and, you know, how, how to, uh, you know, build, uh, build, 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 a, build a presence in, you know, in the, in that market. Um, you know, I always, I always try to keep up to date with what all different bands are doing. I have bands joke with me sometimes. I'll hit, I'll, you know, I might ask them about a show and I'll be like, yeah, I know you guys are touring the next five days here and you, you got a couple days off here and I, but I know you're coming back that Sunday. So if you guys could do a show this upcoming Tuesday, that'd be great. And they're like, wow, you know our schedule better than we do. You know, it's, it's just, you know, just people, you know, appreciate, you know, um, when you know what's going on yeah. as opposed to You're very to just, connected, you know, as you said. Um, they appreciate that personal personability, you know, as as a promoter, a booker. So, um, yeah, and just stay informed on what's going on in your scene and how you can help advance it. You know, you, you can't be in the dark and try to, you know, yeah, uh, you know, make uh, you know apples and oranges yeah. or you know what have you. You know, so. okay, interesting. Okay, wow. All right. My final question is, is you know, besides this grand opening that's, that's, that's going to happen, is there any other upcoming projects or events you want to share that might be happening here? or? Uh, or well, um, we've got a, f- a few shows on the books. Um, gosh, well, uh, I guess immediately uh, yeah. next week um, we're hosting the EP release of our... Uh, local songstress uh, Allison Sherberg who's a, a dear person in the Red Line community um, she's having her EP release on uh, the 17th and then following that we welcome uh, Stone Soul a DJ from Brook, uh, Boulder Colorado um, along with local favorites Mia USB and uh, Cat Party uh, oh, yeah. Then uh, on April 21st, uh, one of my favorites, uh, Captain Green from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, is coming through on a Twisted Tuesday, and we're gonna have them, Holy Miss Moly, and the Psychedelic Monks. And then beyond that, uh, we've got a uh, OBJ, another OBJ pre-party in the works, um, and uh, you know, I'm already booking some other great local touring acts. Um, We've got a, a Copious Jones from Atlanta that'll be coming during the summer, and you know, soon enough, there's gonna be a lot of great things coming through here. So uh, stay up to date with us uh, at our new website, uh, RedlinePub.org. Um, we'll have a revolving calendar going through there um, that we'll be launching within the next couple days. So. Um, so just, on the website. Yeah, stay uh, stay up to date with us Facebook. through the website, through Facebook, uh, all of our other social avenues. And, uh, well, we have quite a busy few months ahead of us, if not a year. And I do thank you for your time, Christian. Of course, AJ. Uh, we got to know a lot more about what's going on here. So, yeah, thank you. 
Uh, this is AJ Hagee, uh, the news source, and I'm here with Christian Ryan. Uh, thanks for your time. AJ out.